let's go even further. I mean, if these are super high mountains, they're gonna have snow, right? If the snow is white and reflecting, well, the shadow of it's gonna be a bluish white, and obviously the bright side of the snow is gonna be orangish white, very close to my cloud color. So now I'm mixing color down here because I need room. There's blue, uh, it needs to be like a little more of a purplish tone. So I'll, I'll add this magenta. Oh yeah, that's pretty. That's a real bright purple. And that'll probably be good. A bright purple will work, I think, pretty good for that snow in the shadow. Let's see. Let's see how this looks. We'll just kind of do this dipping motion. And this kind of these U shapes that come down like the snow is settling into little valleys. But I'm doing the snow in the shadows, so I'm going to stay to the left side of everywhere that I see, you know, a rock structure. Make some down here. This helps give a lot of shape to the mountains, too. where it looks like there's little valleys and things on this. I'm putting snow in the shadows. Let's just make the whole side of this because it's way up high. It's gonna be cool when I come right next to this with the, my, with the lit side of the snow. All of a sudden it gets real 3D looking. I like making waves in water. It's this dipping motion just over and over so that it looks like valleys. Put some more right here, like right on the top of this guy. Yeah, I like the that looks. Plenty of snow on this down here. Just keep adding more to it. Go ahead here, I'm gonna start adding it here. Just connect these two valleys together here. I always keep a bucket of water handy. Spin dry. Just like you're trying to make a fire. I never could get that to work. Now, as a kid, I did try to make many fires like that. What were we doing? Snow, right. Yellow, red, okay. Get a good orange. Now I need a lot of white. A lot of white on there. I'm just painting over all that stuff, so I don't really care what's on the wall down there. Okay, I've got a real bright white. It's probably real similar to my cloud color. Go even whiter. It needs to be nearly all the way white with just a tiny bit of influence of this color. Yeah, there we go. Just like the clouds, same thing. Oh, we're at it, might as well just do a little bit of something, something here, you know? No, stay away. So, I'll find my edges where the snow is, and I'm gonna make this snow where it's coming into the light here. See where it starts to bend up and face this way? That's where this bright light color is. I used to love it when Bob Ross would be like, side of a mountain, just like that. Doesn't seem to work as good when I do it. Notice that all of my lit areas with the snow are primarily at an angle like this. Most of them are at an angle like this because it's representing, you know, paths coming down that side of each mountain. Oh yeah, we got snow in the forecast. And when I do it, I'm looking for areas that are, I want the snow to be on top of the tan and beneath one of the shadow so that it looks like it's resting 
there. See? So I am strategically placing it, just in case it didn't look like it. Right here. I hope this comes out good on the video. Man, if I just blew another video, I'd be so mad. Ah. Like the way that looks. Didn't make much in here. Just a little, a couple little things in here. See, I just use my finger to kind of chop off the, chop off the edge of a little piece that I want. Oh yeah, it's coming out real good. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the mountains. So once again, let's recap the color theory that's used here. I, in order to get a more uh, you know, brilliant background that pops out that looks like light, you know, shining on three-dimensional objects. I made sure that my shadows were opposite to my light. And you can just observe the natural occurrence of that, as I said, with the orange light from the sun coming through a blue sky and scattering blue light. And so I have bluish shadows and I have orange colored light. I made sure to influence each color I mixed with those appropriate settings, if it was in the shadow or it was in the light. If I had a brown that was in the light, it got more orange. If I had the brown that was in the shadow, it got more blue, which causes it to be gray. And same with the clouds, same with all this. I'm using opposites on the color wheel. And then just to fine tune it. Where something was too red, I added green. Where something was too orange, I added blue. Likewise, all around the color wheel. So on the next video, we'll get into doing some closer foreground, maybe some wild looking trees, some water. Right now my family's home, so I gotta stop.